you're a brand new player in grand cross age of titans and you want to gain power fast then this is the video for you today we're going to talk about all the different ways that you can gain power in grand cross age of titans and then we're going to go over a couple of tips to actually do it faster but first if you guys didn't know the global launch for grand cross age of titans was just a couple of days ago so you can download the game for free right now with the link in the description below it's available for android for ios and for pc which is how i'm playing it right now so if you've been waiting for this game to come out it's here give the game a try okay now the first thing that we have to talk about is what is your player power and where does the power actually come from well if you look in the top left corner i have 4.5 million power right now at the time of recording this and if you actually come up here and click on your player power you'll see that it's broken down in four different segments okay first we have the building combat power next we have the research combat power then there's soldier combat power and hero power and if you take a look here you'll see that actually a majority of my power comes from building research and heroes but the single largest category is the soldier combat power so so which of these is the most important and which one can you get the most of in the shortest amount of time well the truth is that there's a couple of tricks for each of these categories so we're going to go through them one by one starting with the building combat power now if you tap on any building here in your city you can tap the little i next to it and it'll tell you what the combat power of that building is and if you tap this letter i you could scroll all the way down and you'll be able to see what the combat power is for this building when it's at max level of 25. so here we see the infantry training ground can at most get me 650,000 power all on its own now if you compare that to let's say a farmland and i scroll all the way to the bottom here we have 160,000. so clearly the barracks will give you much more combat power than a farmland but you also have to remember that you're going to have four different farms right so it kind of balances out but not quite you could take a look at your academy you scroll down here this is 867,000 power which is crazy your embassy is worth 745,000 power but the number one thing that's going to get you the most amount of power in your entire city is your castle if you tap the i here you'll see that at max level you get 2.3 million power for this castle and that means that the earlier stages of this castle are going to scale higher than the earlier stages of all of your other buildings it goes without saying that you want to be focusing on leveling up your castle anyway so the great news is that you're going to get nice bumps of power for every single castle upgrade that you do and in case you missed my beginner's guide for this game which if you haven't seen it yet it'll be linked down below it's almost an hour long and it's going to give you a ton of tips to get you literally the best start to grand cross age of titans so definitely check that out after this one but you want to be focusing on your castle anyway for the progression of your account but the side effect of that is that you're actually going to get nice bumps of power as you're doing so so it's just another reason to focus on that castle next we can talk about your research power and that is the power you get by completing researches in your academy okay so let's go ahead and jump in here and if you take a look at the economic technology let's go all the all the way to the end we can see cart expansion this is the last one and at level 10 it gets you 692,000 power that's actually kind of a lot considering we were just comparing it to some of the buildings let's take a look at cart improvement here this is 487 okay so it's not that high unlocking your catapults is only going to get you 103,000 power but the real bump in power is going to come from your battle technology and that should go without saying because you're talking about combat power and so combat oriented research should give you more combat power it's common sense right but just to paint the picture here if we scroll all the way to the end we won't even look at the tier five units we'll just take a look at this is mock battles okay this is near the end of your battle technology so it's very late game but you'll see that this technology at level 10 gets you 2.1 million power okay let's take a look at armor enhancement we scroll all the way down 2.1 million power all right let's take a look at boost morale this gives you this gives you hp this is again 2.1 million power so literally each one of these at level 10 is almost as much as a max city hall worth of power that's crazy so that just goes to show that the battle technology does scale really really fast but probably even more important than that is unlocking your additional tiers of units i noticed for myself in the early game that i got a really nice bump in power when i went from tier two units which is over here 
to tier three units okay that's when your swordsmen become gladiators okay and you know that you are a giga chad when you're walking around with gladiators okay do you want cavalry or do you want literal knights i think it's pretty obvious just based on the name that these are more powerful but if we take a look here uh, you get 60 000 power by upgrading from just getting the tier three unit but in order to unlock those tier three units you only have to bring the prerequisite technologies up to three out of five so you don't actually have to max these out before you can get your tier three units and if you take a look at let's say iron shield for example this gets you 44,000 power but right now it's only 7.6 right so I can get this up to 7.6 and then I can immediately research a technology that gives me 60k right so it's it's actually for the early game this is a massive bump in power and I would recommend unlocking the tier three units as soon as you possibly can as soon as you get the minimum requirement for all the battle technology unlock tier three and likewise unlock tier four if you can tier four gets you 184,000 power but beyond that okay despite not even finishing this technology you could start to work on the next technology and what is that this is medicinal research this gives you troop hp and look at this 2.5 million power you actually get more power from this research by getting three percent of universal troop health then if you come all the way to the end here this gives you seven percent of health and less total power that's actually crazy and i wonder if that is a mistake from the developers of the game i'm not really sure but what i do know is that these early technologies do scale really really well let's take a look at this one 2.5 million power this is for close order drill that's universal troop attack same thing with quenching here 2.5 million power so these early technologies literally get you more power than the later ones so do the bare minimum to get your tier threes and then start to scale your power like crazy now the other reason that you want to unlock a higher tier of unit is because then you can train those units and if we come into let's just say the cavalry training ground here you'll see that a tier one unit these are the units you start the game with has one combat power per unit and I have 91.6 thousand tier one units for cavalry which means I have 91.6 thousand power worth of tier one cavalry if we take a look at tier two it is double that okay so even though I have fewer tier two units I actually have 146 thousand uh power from these units in total and that goes up to you guessed it three four tier three units okay so here I actually have more power in tier three units than I do for tier two units because even though I have fewer of them it's actually crazy I have nearly double the amount of tier one units and I have 50 percent more power in tier three units so you could see that not only do you get 60 000 power by just researching the actual technology here but every time that you train units it's like you're getting 3x the power for every single time that you're training now the downside is that it actually takes more time to train these right so you could make that argument but you can also literally just upgrade your tier ones to tier threes or tier fours or whatever and it takes less time to go from tier one to tier three than it does to just train tier three raw so keep that in mind you can always upgrade to tier three so don't think that it makes sense to just spam tier ones in the late game it literally doesn't but that's important now just to hammer home my point uh tier four actually jumps up to a 5x multiplier here compared to tier one and tier five are a 10x multiplier so having the highest tier unit possible is obviously going to be much better for your total power and the final place to get power in Grand Cross Age of Titans is from your heroes you can actually see at the bottom of the screen here my Jeanette has 61.5 thousand power all on her own so she just by having her in my current state which is level 51 with max stars and 5155 for her skill configuration okay she has more power than unlocking a tier three unit right just all on her own so you're gonna get a lot of power from your heroes and the good news is that this is something that you can do relatively easily and it's something that you have control over in your pve engagements and in completing events which we're going to talk about in just a moment but let's actually break down where this power comes from because you can click this little question mark here and it will tell you that just unlocking Jeanette will get you 1100 base power that's it you can leave her at level one do nothing you get a thousand power okay her level so her being at level 51 gives her an extra 7550 power her star level being max stars gets her 8000 extra power 
her skills give her 41,000 power there's a trick to the skills which we'll talk about in a moment and which ones will get you the most power and then you also get your talents okay now this is tied directly to the level because you basically get one talent every time you level up plus you actually get some more when you increase the star level here you can see 10 bonus talents at max stars okay so they're very closely correlated but just by putting your talent points into your heroes you're gonna gain power and I can't begin to tell you how many times I'll come in here and there's a little red dot next to somebody and it's because there's an unspent talent point now for everyone here I've made sure that I've put it into them but if you see a lot of those red dots here on these heroes just click on them and make sure that you don't have any unspent talents make sure you use all your talent points that way you gain the most amount of power for them okay so now that we know that you can get a lot of power just by having these heroes and leveling them up a little bit how should you take that knowledge and use it to your advantage well first of all if you have a lot of summons available you should use all of them especially at the beginning of the game and this is because when you summon you have the chance of getting heroes and the more heroes that you obtain the more skills that you can put on them and as we saw with Jeanette that's where a majority of her power comes from literally like over 60 percent of her power comes from literally just her skills alone which is kind of crazy so make sure that you do as many summons as you can and if there are events here then you want to make sure that you do all these events to get you as many summons as possible okay here you can see that you gain some advanced summons from this world gatherer event this is literally just from gathering out in the world you're going to do that anyway right uh here we can take a look vestiges of history this gives you universal mana stones this is what you need to get the skill levels up on your heroes okay now this is a long-term event I have almost a year left here but you'll see that every time you level up your castle you're going to gain a mana stone which is nice and the universal mana stones can be used to level up any mana stone for any hero of that rarity so the purple mana stones are for the uniques of course the golden ones are for the legendaries I think that makes a lot of sense okay now how can we use this information to our advantage well let's take a look here at my fin you'll see my fin is level 10 and if we take a look at his power it's very low uh his hero level gets him 100 and his hero talents get him 450 all right now let's move over to our Helga who is also level 10 and you'll see here that her hero level gives her 100 and her hero talents give her 450 so her level and talents which are very closely related as we talked about before they're actually the exact same amount of power no matter what the rarity of that hero is and that extends over to the uncommons and also to the uh the the rares the blue heroes here as well but the difference is that it costs more experience to level up a legendary hero than it does for a unique hero so if we take a look at the first 10 upgrades here you'll see that to go from level one to level two it costs you 100 experience for an a unique hero but for a legendary hero it costs 120 so 20 percent more and you can see as we progress through the levels all the way up to level 11 it costs 5,900 experience to get a hero a unique hero from 10 to 11 but for a legendary hero it costs 7,600 much more so if we know that the power that you get from your talents and your levels is identical no matter what well getting a hero to two stars okay if they're a unique it costs 14,040 total experience but for a legendary to get the second star it costs 18,210. now you're going to get almost the exact same amount of power and the only reason that you actually get more power from the legendary 40 more is because you actually get more power from the actual star upgrade for the legendary uh everything else before that is identical so if you take five unique heroes up to two stars versus five legendary heroes up to two stars you're going to spend significantly less total experience to get that job done so in the early game what you want to do if what you care about is power and we're going to talk about later in the video why you might not even care about your power or why you should care about your power then you would want to level up your unique heroes more in the beginning of the game because it's going to happen faster you're going to gain that power faster with the least amount of experience now it's important to know that this is not the case for your hero skill levels okay you could see here that the total amount of power for each skill upgrade for the different types of heroes is vastly different you actually get more than double the total power from getting a legendary hero's skill to five than you do for a unique hero's skill to five now of course it's much easier to get a unique hero skill to five so you're probably going to have more of them anyway keep that in mind but it's worth noting that you know skill points are not equal like 
levels or talent points okay but this is really important to know because you can see here that when you level up a skill from level one to two it actually only goes up by 300 power but if you level up a skill from four to five it goes up by 3000 power a little bit more so your power actually scales faster if you put all of your skill points into a single skill to max it out and then move on to the second skill and max that skill out and then move on to a third skill so on and so forth so for example you could see on my Jeanette here that I have three skills that are at five but if I take this second skill and I bump it up from one skill point to two skill points well first of all it's going to cost me 40 mana stones and second of all it's only going to bring me from 400 to 700 power which is crazy but now if we take a look at my Heimosu her third skill is at four and it will also cost 40 mana stones but this is a completely different case for the power because it will go from level four to level five which means i'll get 3000 power from that skill upgrade for the same amount of mana stones so if what you care about is your power then you're going to get the most amount of power out of your skills by taking all of your mana stones and funneling them into one skill at a time now again if you've seen my beginner's guide then you know that for basically all heroes in the game except for the gatherers and maybe some of the hunt heroes the first skill the active skill is almost always the best one anyway so you want to get this one to five before you do anything else and this is just another reason why that's the best thing for you to do because your power is going to scale much faster by maxing out that first skill because the first like four skill upgrades only cost about 10 mana stones and depending on the rarity of that hero you're going to get between uh 24 and 55,000 extra power out of that for only at like what 40 mana stones total so definitely make sure you focus all of your mana stones on a single skill if what you care about the most is your power level and how quickly you can scale it okay so now that you have some tips on how you can optimize each of these combat power categories building research soldier and hero now we're going to go into some pve tips these are some ways that you can actually speed up the progression of your account so that way you can gain more power first of all you're going to see these monsters out in the world okay these are some orc cavalry they look super cool and the tip here is that you always if you're going to fight monsters out in the world you always want to be attacking them with a hunt hero and there are multiple reasons for this now if a hero has the hunt talent tree then they will guaranteed have at least one skill that is focused on dealing bonus damage to monsters or gets bonus experience from monsters and both of these are crucial not only for the skill but also for the talents if you come in here you'll see that in the hunt talent tree I can move over here this is the hunt talent tree okay you'll see that there are multiple talents that will deal bonus damage or get you bonus experience we'll see that over here 30 percent bonus hero experience which is insane and just as important is this efficient hunting talent this will actually reduce the amount of stamina it costs to attack a monster in the world by up to nine okay so if we take a look here if I wanted to attack this uh level 23 it would normally cost me 50 stamina but if I'm using a hunt hero with those talents it would only cost me 41 and this is important because you actually have a cap on the amount of stamina that you can use this stamina will regenerate over time but you want to use the most efficient method of attacking monsters possible why would you spend 50 stamina to attack a monster when you could spend 41 you can attack more monsters in general if you're more efficient with your spending so not only will you deal more damage gain faster experience but you also will spend down your stamina points more efficiently which means you can attack more monsters and you will take fewer troops to your hospital because of the increased damage that you're doing so you're dealing more damage per second which means less time in battle which means less turns that you're taking damage so you actually save on your hospital will as well so there's like a dozen different reasons why you will progress your account faster and gain power faster by using hunt heroes as opposed to any other hero for the pve content and here's another quick tip about monsters okay if you want to attack let's say a level 10 let's say you're in the early game but there's not a level 10 nearby boom i search for it and it spawns 
that's crazy now what actually just happened there is the game could not find a nearby level 10 uh, monster out in the world so it spawned one for me this is important because if i scroll out you'll see that i'm actually pretty close to the center of the map you'll see that this is the very center this is the castle by the way when you're watching this somebody in my kingdom probably already took the royal castle and you can watch that live stream on my channel go ahead and check it out you definitely don't want to miss that but the point here is that my city is within the final zone of the map which is where the higher level monsters will spawn and so it wouldn't have even been possible to find a level 10 here and and yet it still spawned in automatically now I actually don't think it works beyond level 10 yes exactly level 10 is the highest level that this will occur for uh but that's really important to know that even when you're you know somewhere else on the map there will always be at least a level 10 monster that you can attack and you know basically guaranteed defeat later in the game the next tip that i have for defeating monsters out in the world is that every time that you attack a monster there is an acquirable reward now some of these rewards will be more common than others you will always get experience from defeating monsters so keep that in mind but these rewards are multiplied by the number of heroes that you have attacking that monster at any given time so if I attack this level 22 orc warrior with just a single army then I will get some amount of this stuff dropped times one okay because only one army will be defeating it but if I take five armies and I actually perform a pincer attack, which is when you swarm down or you surround a target and you defeat it that way, then I will get some amount of these rewards dropped multiplied by the number of heroes that actually attacked it. So if I come into my reports here, okay, you could see three hours ago, I was killing some monsters out in the world. And I actually attacked this level 21 orc archer captain with multiple armies okay so i had the Jeanette attack him the angus attack him the acteus attack him the valkyrie attack him and the Jeanette attack him okay i had five armies hitting this same the same monster okay and if i scroll down you'll see the rewards for each of them so here i got five training speed ups 43 level one resource chests a single adamantium plus the actual experience for my army here we take a look at valkyrie she got an experience bonus because of her skills but she also got one unique star level fragment uh five minutes of universal speed ups and 43 resource chests if we look at my Acteus, he got a massive amount of experience because of his uh i think third skill and he got also one star five minutes of speed ups 43 of the resource chests here we could see my angus and Hamosu got a nice little chunk of experience here only speed ups and resources and for my fifth army we got a chunk of uh experience and we got five minutes of training speed ups a rare star fragment and some adamantium and resources so that's really important to know because if you are surrounding a single monster uh you're gonna be able to defeat it faster than if you did a 1v1 okay and you're gonna get five times the rewards for it now of course it will cost you five times the stamina but it's again it's beneficial for the amount of troops that are going to your hospital and it's also just faster okay uh time is money you want to you want to get as much power as possible right as fast as you can and so make sure you swarm down these monsters and while you're doing this make sure that you're attacking the highest level monster that you can comfortably defeat with your five armies okay this level two orc warrior i would not be able to defeat this with a single army but with five armies i can and the reason that you always want to attack the highest level monster is because not only does it give you better rewards and more experience but it costs the same amount of stamina okay look at this it costs 50 stamina to attack the level 22 or it will cost me 50 stamina to attack the level 10 but let's compare these rewards 15,000 experience 33,000 experience okay this one can't even drop unique stars uh we can get a maximum of 10 gems here we can get a maximum of 30 gems this is the premium currency guys okay so you get better rewards for the same stamina cost so you're literally it, it makes no sense to attack lower level monsters if what you want to do is get the maximum rewards and get as much power on your account as possible remember the higher the level of your heroes the more power that they give you so you want to level up the heroes fast and if you're struggling to defeat some of the higher level monsters out in the world then that's where liege skills come in okay let's take a look at the liege skills that i'm using right now this one is from acteus and if we take a look it says with my level 40 it says decreases all damage taken from monsters by 20 percent 
for troops in the selected area for 600 seconds okay that is 10 minutes that's crazy if you're going to be killing a bunch of monsters out in the world now of course this does have a three hour cooldown which is unfortunate but this will go from all the way up to 30 percent of reduced damage taken that's massive guys 30 percent damage taken reduction that's wild one third of their damage is getting chopped off okay here it's one fifth but still it's super super useful and also i talked about this in my uh, hero tier list which you should definitely check out that's also linked in the description but barriers in this game are very powerful in the early game okay so here we could see that for calipi her leech skill uh, at level 40 gets me a six percent barrier for troops remaining for 20 seconds okay so this is really nice in a pinch if you really just need to take down that one strong monster one time boom give yourself the most powerful barrier you can and it's best to actually trigger this before you even enter battle right so you you drop your barrier and then immediately attack the monster and the reason for that is because it's six percent of remaining forces so if you use this at the beginning of the battle it's going to be the, it's six percent of your entire army whereas if you are at half health then it's six percent of half your army okay so it's more powerful at the earlier uh, stages of the fight so make sure you drop it right away same thing with Actaeus, although that's you know not nearly as crucial with the timing because it is for 10 minutes and also guys as you're defeating these monsters keep an eye on your events tab at the very top of the screen here okay because some of these events like we talked about earlier are going to give you a bunch of things that you need that you just get for free okay so for example instead of defeating monsters on the world right now it would be better for me to defeat monster fortresses okay that would be a better allocation location for my stamina because if I defeat these fortresses uh, then I'm gonna just get bonus stuff for free same thing for helping Alliance although that will happen over time but if I defeat five fortresses look at this I get what three four five six mana stones for my gatherers for free plus some free summon some bonus resources and if I defeat seven that's a universal season one mana stone that is insane that is a that these are so hard to come by so keep an eye on all this stuff and just do what events come around because that's going to help you get power quicker and for the final tip if you guys are just trying to squeeze as much power out of your heroes as you possibly can then one thing that you can do is actually level up as many heroes as possible to level 10 and add the second star to them okay uh because for example my galahad right here has 4110 power her hero level is only 10 her star level is zero and her talents are zero it would be very cheap to get her to level 10 like my finn here and if i did that then she would get 100 power 450 talents plus 50 so that would be 600 total power multiplied by however many heroes you do that for so if you do that for 10 heroes that's 6,000 power if you do it for if you do it for your legendary heroes it's actually even more power right because we talked about how their star level actually goes up by a little bit more but you can see here that i have 38 of the 45 heroes so if i had 38 heroes at level one with no stars or anything and i brought them up to level 10 with two stars if it was about 600 per hero then i would have 22,000 bonus power added to my account and that could make the difference to push you over whatever threshold that you're looking for and now you might be saying okay on the arc what why even who cares about power like why would you want to gain power fast well the number one reason why you want to gain power fast is in the early game to join an alliance okay right now i'm in the iron legion in kingdom three and we have a three million power requirement okay you can't join if you have less than three million power or at least that's what we are aiming for all right and if you first start the game on day one you might see them say okay well we require 200,000 power okay well how are you going to get 200,000 power quickly well you can use the tips in this video but let's say you're at 180,000 power well you could actually push over that 200,000 power threshold by just leveling up a couple of heroes to 10 and getting that second star in them okay it's literally just the amount of experience it costs to do that is so cheap okay let's take a look here for Jang Sung for example we'll just use him uh let's see it takes 100 experience like look at this boom 300 okay boom that's it's so little okay look at this I have 33,000 of these 
it's so easy to get a hero to level 10 uh and you can even do it for free you don't even have to use the 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 items like i was just using you can use the tips that i talked about earlier to defeat the monsters and look 33,000 experience i'll instantly get him uh to like level probably like 15 or something like that just by defeating this monster okay so the amount of power that you have is probably going to be the bottleneck for getting into the stronger alliances in the game and again i talked about alliances in my beginner's guide but there are so many uh advantages to being in a powerful alliance they're going to have better alliance research they're also going to get more gifts here because they're going to be more active there's going to be people making purchases which are also going to get you more gifts so if you can get a high enough power to get into a good alliance then that good alliance will make you stronger which means you'll get power faster and it snowballs from there so gaining power quickly at the beginning of the game for let's say the first 48 to 72 hours of a server is crucial so hopefully the tips in this video helped you guys out if they did i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into that youtube algorithm so other grand cross age of titans players might see it comment down below any other tips that you have for gaining power quickly i'm still learning the game alongside you guys so if i miss anything important put it down below and it might make it in a future video while you're down there consider subscribing to the channel and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a grand cross age of titans video and i do want to thank the sponsor of today's video which is grand cross age of titans I'm very happy to be generously sponsored by them. The game is absolutely amazing. I've been enjoying it a ton. It is, you guys know, I love city builder games on the channel. So to be sponsored by such a great brand new city builder is it's the best case scenario for my channel. So if you guys haven't given the game a try yet, it is out. So click the link in the description below to give the game a try absolutely for free. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.